and hopefully to try and inspire you to write code that's easier to change if you're writing code or to challenge yourself to, uh, to, to write code or to have your WordPress sites in a way that's, that's just easier to manage, um, whether that's more documentation or um, different coding standards. Um, and I guess like I want to try and inspire you to challenge the stack or whatever you're using at the moment and, and have a look around and try and push it forward in some way, whatever that looks like. So I love PHP. Um, PHP is what WordPress is built on, if you're not familiar. Um, and obviously I love WordPress. Uh, I've been using them for a long time. Why do I love WordPress? That's a great question. Fundamentally, it's because it's fantastic for clients. Um, me as a developer, like it has its has its gripes, but for for clients, it adds real value. It's really fantastic kind of editor experience. Um, yeah, developers, it could be better. WordPress development kind of like should be fun. Um, it should be enjoyable, but you often hear that actually it's uh, it's difficult to work with. There's, there's problems compared to to some other, um, I guess, CMSs or, or software um, like Laravel or Symfony. So. I want to try and make WordPress like great again. Um, that's my kind of like aim. I want to make it more fun and make it more enjoyable when you're working with it. Um, it's doable. You just need to kind of put a little bit more effort to kind of get there. Um, so I want to talk about Lumberjack. Lumberjack is, uh, I guess it's a, a theme and a framework for WordPress. So at Rarely, we spent many years working with WordPress. We've done a lot of other software engineering. Um, and we challenge ourselves to write code that's easy to maintain uh, and easy to change. So Lumberjack is a result of all of those years of us kind of striving to, uh, to be better. Um, and I guess like it's a framework that you can plug into um, your WordPress uh, site. I would love for you to play with Lumberjack personally, but like if nothing else from this talk, I hope that I can at least show you what can be done in WordPress if, if you uh, kind of push yourself a little bit more and inspire you to come up with like your own solution to, to some of these problems. So we talked about problems with WordPress. Like, what do I think the problems with WordPress are? So I want to just kind of like rewind a little bit and talk about some of those. Uh, so there's going to be like a bit of code during this section. So if you're unfamiliar with code, try and stay with me a little bit. Um, uh, so just kind of going through here, we're doing a query to say, I want five posts uh, for, like, these are clubs. So this is custom post type. Oh, no, sorry. This is a, uh, a tag. So I want, I want to get all posts that are tagged with club. And then kind of just doing some way of looping over them uh, and then spitting some, some HTML out. And this is what most WordPress sites uh, themes and stuff look like. Does that look kind of familiar to anyone? Has anyone seen stuff like that before? Some of those. Um, so I guess like what's wrong with that? Um, for me, there's a mix of concerns here. There's presentation logic, which is kind of this HTML, um, figuring out what it looks like. And there's database queries. Um, OK, yes, there's some stuff there. But OK, well, why is that bad? That's because file, this file now has two reasons to change. If you need to update anything to your, your kind of database query, you have to come into this file and change it. Um, if you need to change any presentation stuff, you have to come into this file and change it. So there's multiple times at which this file could be touched and bugs introduced. So the idea is that you want to reduce the amount of times a file can change. Um, another example, if you're doing stuff that's got like Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram like integration or something in, don't have all of those in one file because those are three different reasons to change. Have them in separate files. So the separate files have one reason to change. So it's just like looking at splitting some of that stuff out. Um, also, it's very procedural. I, you start up here and you just work down until you get to the end of the file. Okay, well, wh what's wrong with procedural code? Or often it's very dry. So dry there stands for don't repeat yourself. Um, oh, sorry, not dry. So you often have to like do the same code multiple times through your code base, um, and therefore isn't reusable. So if you need to make a change to like uh, like the markup in here, add another class, you might have to do that in several places in your code, which makes it difficult to change. And also, I'd say this is quite hard to read. 
um, it doesn't look very obvious exactly what's going on there. So kind of what are the alternatives? I want to talk about Timber quickly. Timber is a free WordPress plugin uh, and kind of starter theme that gives you a number of like awesome stuff. Uh, we've been using Timber for years, it's fantastic. But fundamentally, it gives you like a good separation of concerns. Uh, it gives you something called MVC, which is, stands for Model View Controller. Um, so just quickly there, your model there is kind of your, your database. So that's, that's responsible for your custom post types and, and your querying. Your view is then where your HTML and stuff lives. And the controller is now responsible for knowing how to get stuff out of the database and pass it into the view. Uh, with the view stuff, rather than just using HTML, uh, it does something a little bit more clever and uses something called Twig. Twig is a um, PHP templating language. Uh, basically, it looks like this. Uh, so it's basically HTML with a little bit of extra sugar on top. Um, so we can see here, we, we do a check to say, if post is not empty, then spit some stuff out. Um, and so now we're looping over for post and post. It's just doing a loop. Now we spit out the article and we just say, now just punch out the, uh, this space and put the title in it and put the preview and whatever. So already this view <coughs> has less reasons to change. The database queries have, have come out from this view. And it's much easier to read uh, because of it. And you're not dealing with WordPress directly. Um, and then you have like an index.php file. So this is what's passing this data into it. So we're expecting a variable called posts. So we need to pass posts into this view. And it's going, hey, Timber, I want you to do the query for me and go and get me some posts. Um, so that's basically what Timber uh, kind of gives you. Uh, that's fantastic. So, but I have some problems with Timber controllers. Um, quite controversial, some people love Timber. Uh, so we'll have a look at this again. I still think this is very procedural. You start at the top and you kind of work your way down until you get to the end. Um, and we know procedural code isn't overly uh, reasonable. It's often not very dry, difficult to change, and it's kind of hard to read when you get really long files. I've worked on some sites that use Timber and you've got three, four, 500 line um, controllers and it gets a little bit messy. So like hypothetically, what would we prefer to have instead as an alternative? Um, so for me, it would be a more object-oriented approach. Uh, so hypothetically, we'd have a, a class rather than just a file. Um, the class allows us to do stuff like extending. Um, we'll go through some of that in a second. Um, so we then have a method, say, called handle. And then we have our logic in here. So this will be the same. Return it. Um, so this is like exactly the same as the previous example, except we're in a class. Benefits of classes, now you can extend other classes so you get inheritance, which is fantastic. So an example there, you could have a method on this base controller that is reused across multiple controllers. And you don't have to have that code reused uh, in every controller. It just has access to it because of that line. Um, so it makes reuse a lot more, e a lot easier. Um, something else you can do, so, um, this is uh, kind of like lumberjack syntax. And in, in lumberjack, what you can do is you can say, I want to show a view, so you don't even have to care about like this being a, a timber thing. Um, you can like set a status code on, on stuff here as well if you need to. Um, but yeah, fundamentally, it's, it's using OOP. Um, the other benefit of controllers is that you get to encapsulate or isolate code. So, this looked quite messy where it was quite, quite procedural. Actually, this is much cleaner. We just say post, hey, go and get some posts. And the, the knowledge on how to get posts is encapsulated within this private function. So nothing outside of index, index controller can call this method, but now it's kind of self-documenting. You can put some more docs and stuff around it and you know uh, nothing in there is gonna be, um, uh, I guess, tampered with in any way. So all of this comes out of the box with Lumberjack, our framework. And you can start like using all that stuff right now. For me, once I started writing code like this in WordPress, I like never wanted to go back. Um, so just to give like a quick recap to those controllers. Benefits, like you get to write object oriented code rather than procedural. You can use inheritance to extend base classes. Uh, you can encapsulate more complex routines and private functions. Um, and I don't know if anyone's familiar with PSRs. 
I won't go into that now because I could talk about that for a long time. Um, they're basically standards between uh, lots of PHP frameworks and that sort of stuff. So the code you write for that matches a, a PSR compliant standard can be reused on, say, um, Symfony or Laravel or some other kind of like other stuff. So PSRs are fantastic when you start reusing code between um, different types of software. Config. So WordPress uh, has some way of letting you uh, configure things. Um, WPconfig.php. This is typically what one of these one of these files looks like. So you've got your database, you've got your user, password, host, that sort of stuff. Um, so I guess what's wrong with that sort of stuff is it works well for most people. Um, one of the problems here is that these things are constants. Um, using this syntax here, that means they're constants. That means they cannot change. Once they're set here, you try to change them later, PHP will say, go away. Uh, and it typically encourages people to have all of these in their code base committed to, to, the, uh, to Git or SVN or whatever they're using. Um, if you don't believe me on that second one, you can search GitHub for like define DB password and you'll find live database credentials to stuff people have committed to GitHub. Um, so uh, it's one of those things that you kind of have to be careful of. And I think it's, it's not the best practice. So <clears throat> what can we do? First off, let's not commit any sensitive data to, to Git. Um, we can use a package called .env. Uh, basically, you don't commit this. This is what .env file looks like. Um, you don't commit this file. Uh, if you were to put this on a stage or a live server, you would just manually create that file on the server once put those details in, um, and then like, it's just, you just leave it there. Uh, or if someone like, new, bring, like, sets a new project up on their local machine, uh, they would have to set up their own environment and you don't have conflicts with like, them committing it and it was a mess. So basically you can see here we're setting the, the name, user password, um, setting the, the site name and whatever. And in your application now, you can, you can get these variables and stuff out, these sensitive uh, bits of information. So you can say, uh, hey, Env, I want to get out the Google Maps API key. And that will get you this key. Um, so you don't have to know like, too much about .env other than like, you plug it in and you can do this sort of stuff, which is fantastic. Um, so you can like, figure out how you bring .env into your workflow, uh, how it fits into your stack. Um, however, it comes out of the box with something called Bedrock. Uh, again, Bedrock is an amazing open source piece of software, and it gives you a way of managing your dependencies. So things like plugins. WordPress. WordPress is a dependency. You want a specific version of WordPress that you've tested things against. Um, and Bedrock comes with something called, uh, or uses something called Composer, which is just a dependency managed for PHP. Um, it's a bit like NPM or Bower, if you've ever used those before. And I guess like traditional WordPress sites, you would have WordPress and then some plugins that are kind of like scattered around your theme. They're not necessarily collected. If someone wants to work on your website, they have to go and download all of these manually. You have to give them a list of the versions. It's typically like a, a bit of a mess, quite difficult to work on. What Bedrock does is put a nice little box around it using um, Composer and says, okay, uh, this current code base says that I want to support WordPress 5.4. And I also want these three plugins at these specific versions. And those are written into a file, those names and those versions. So if someone else brings that code base down, they run Composer install, and it'll bring down these exact versions and those exact plugins. So it's really easy to get up and running. And then your theme just sits on top of Bedrock. You just kind of do some stuff. Bedrock doesn't care much about your theme. Um, uh, but good thing about web, uh, yeah, Bedrock, it comes with .env out of the box already configured. You don't have to worry about it. You just start using it. Um, so I've talked about lots of other open source software. But re going back to kind of Lumberjack, what does, how does Lumberjack kind of fit into to Bedrock and, and this sort of stuff? So exactly the same. We love using Lumberjack with Bedrock. You can use it without. But um, so the idea is that, like, the, the brain of Lumberjack is, is this framework that you bring in in the same way that you would with uh, the plugins in WordPress, so via Composer. Um, and then you can use the Lumberjack starter theme on top. So 
when I say lumberjack starter theme, that's basically just a slightly glorified timber theme. You can plug the lumberjack framework into like any timber theme if you're using timber. Um, uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it. So, uh, so circling back to the config then, there's still a few things that I don't like about this approach. .m is fantastic, but you can't use it for like all of your config because some of them you need to commit it. Um, and they also behave like constants. Once they're defined in here, you can't go and change them. Um, but this is just config, right? It doesn't matter like if config comes from .m, whether it comes from WP config or somewhere else, you might have some other approach for config. So I think your code shouldn't care about where the config stuff comes from. It just wants to say, hey, config, get me this variable out. I.e., your code just wants to say, uh, hey, config, can I get the Google Maps API key, please, rather than like get env. Get env knows that this has to come from an env file. So an example, we say, hey, config, can you get me uh, the Google Maps API key, please? Nice and simple. And then your config can look like, uh, okay, we've got a Google Maps API key in like app. So this is app. That's how those are linked. Um, and then like your config then knows where that lives, whether it's in WP config, whether it's in hard coded, whether it's get env. So your application here, your theme just says config, get me this thing. And now it's the config's responsibility for knowing where that stuff lives. Um, uh, another example, so you can nest stuff quite easily. So for example, if you want to access like location, you can say, okay, go to, go to the app file, find me logs.location, and that will, that will get that variable out. So you can do all this in, in Lumberjack um, with kind of dot notation uh, and hide away like all of that complex logic of, of where your, your config stuff's coming from. It's incredibly simple. Um, other stuff that comes out of the box with the Lumberjack config, you can register post types really easily. There's just a file where you just put your, your kind of post type, uh, post type name, and it will just register it for you. You don't have to do register post type. Image sizes, if you use those a lot. Um, error logging, you can configure that. Menu locations, so that's like uh, main nav, footer nav. You can configure what those locations are and just say, hey, config, get me this location. Um, and you can tell it, like, if you've got other packages or plugins that you want to load views from, you can tell Lumberjack to go, oh, also look in this place for them. Um, well, that was kind of reused to be a lot better. So, uh, and, and also we've got basic theme support, so like featured images or that sort of stuff. So that's config. Um, config's uh, kind of quite handy, but you don't use it too often in, in your code. Um, most of the time, it boils down to querying things. You want to get stuff out of a database and present them in some way. So this is typically what de uh, database queries look like in WordPress. Um, anyone know what that looks like, uh, what that does, like straight away? You, you have to like try and figure it out, right? Um, so uh, you want to get products. You want 10 of them. And you want products that are basically uh, between two dates. So um, I know ones that aren't like released yet or ones that aren't um, no longer supported. So you're trying to like scope products between two dates. And then you say, hey, WP query, get me those. Um, and you call get posts on them. That's typically how you do queries in WordPress. Um, from my experience, queries like this don't get reused. There could be like a very similar one or like if one thing's changed, then like still all of this logic here isn't reused across the rest of your page uh, or, or rest of your theme. So uh, I think it's quite unreadable. Uh, it's, it's difficult to glance at that and know what it's doing or why it's doing things. Um, also, when you run get posts, what you get back is an array. And in that array, you have WP post objects. Um, those are okay, but I think we can do one better. Uh, actually, I say I, Timber, thinks we can do one better. Um, so with Timber, you get this concept of post objects, or these are your like models in MVC. Um, so instead of using WP query, you do querying through Timber to say get posts. Um, uh, so in, in here, this new post, what that does uh, under the hood with Timber, that will automatically go and find you the post with ID of one which can be really handy. Um, or you can pass in the same arguments that we had before. You can pass that whole block into um, timber get post as well. 
The benefit of that is that instead of WP post objects you get back, um, say like when we do a new post, you would get a timber post object or whatever class that you kind of want. Um, we'll talk about those benefits in a second, but that's, that's really key. Lombajack has taken this like one little step further. So we have a Rarely Lombajack post that just extends the timber post. So you get all the benefits from the timber post. Um, and instead of doing timber get post, you now say, okay, I want, I want posts basically to a query on them. Um, and that just kind of like proxies the timber stuff. But the, what this means is now like here you get a, a, a Relic Lombajack post object. And now when you query multiple, you get an array of Relic Lombajack post objects. Or if you have a custom pro, uh, post type called product, you can do queries on that and get product um, post objects back. Uh, so I guess like what would what does this kind of class look like? So we have a product which extends post, um, and we can add methods to that class. So we can say, okay, I'll, I want to products can have photos. So I want one consistent set, way of getting photos for products that's not scattered all through my application. Um, and what's really handy is uh, I don't know if you've seen this. This is just a uh, return type. So it's saying this this function must return an array. Um, I think this makes your application a lot more readable and a lot more reusable. And now when we query, we say like, okay, get me product one, two, three. We can now call this method on it to get the photos. Um, so when we're actually using this stuff, like this becomes way shorter. You don't have to do loads of database queries or like other stuff to bloat your code. Um, in terms of like registering post types, I talked, this about, uh, talked about this in config before. So if we do have a product, you have, a, you have to add a method called get post type. That's your name of your post type. You then have get post type uh, config. That's what you'd normally put in register my, uh, post type. Um, so you just have these two methods on, on your custom post type. And then in your config, uh, config slash post types, you just put the name of this class. And Lombajack will do the rest for you. So you, you now have got one consistent place of where your post type is registered. You've got a convention. Um, and you shouldn't ever really need to reference this product. You can do all of this querying stuff in this class. Um, so that's good, but I still think we can make queries a little bit more readable. So let's so take a look at a slightly more advanced query that we can do. So here we've got products and product types. So I know we're viewing a product type page. Um, say like bags, and we want to view a particular bag. So, um, or we want to view all the bags, sorry, in that, um, in that bag. So this is using something called the query builder that we've got in Lumberjack. So you can say, create me a new builder. I want to start doing some complex queries. And I want you to find me all products that have the type of this product type. Uh, I want 10 of them. I want you to order them by title descending and go and get them. So it's a much easier way to kind of see what's going on there. You're not having to deal with this big array of stuff. It's a lot more expressive. It's chainable. Um, for me, when I started writing queries this way in WordPress, I just didn't want to go back. Um, I always had to remember like the certain syntax that you had to do for um, WP query and all that sort of stuff. So I found this so much easier to read and to come back to and to change. You can also use the query builder directly. You don't have to do it. So we, before we used it on uh, a product. So we got product uh, objects back. Uh, but you can use it directly. So you can say, actually, I want products and gift sets. Get me 10 of them, order by title, and get them. So um, I absolutely love, love query builders. Uh, I would recommend like, giving them a whirl. Um, if you need to, you can extend them. We haven't got like complete parity yet with everything that WordPress has, but they're super easy to extend. So we can add, I've done recently, I've added methods like added since, so you want to get like, stuff that are quite new, um, things that have been searched recently. Uh, things, uh, I guess pagination is quite, quite popular, so you can write your own pagination stuff. Um, so yeah, that's, that's query builders, they're fantastic. I would uh, definitely recommend playing with those. Um, the other thing that's kind of in Lumberjack is custom requests. So has anyone ever like submitted a form 
or how to handle like form requests and stuff on Lumberjack, uh, on WordPress or Ajax requests, right? They're quite common. Um, they're also a real pain, I find. Uh, mainly because you can't really define your own like route that you want this thing to go to. You have to use like the admin Ajaxy stuff or post back to the same page, and then you've got your your get and your post on the same file, and it gets really messy. Um, Lumberjack ships with a router, so you can say. Uh, I'm going to set up a new URL endpoint called hello slash world. And when you, when you do a get request on it, so you go to that new browser, um, that's going to run this function. And that function is going to return some HTML, which is this. Um, you get access to not just get, you can do posts, put, delete, um, any kind of rest verbs there. Um, and this gets matched before like WordPress gets a chance to decide where things go as well, which is quite important. So. Um, again, yeah, this is really useful if you've just got like an Ajax request, you can just go, okay, let me just do a new route for it and have all your code encapsulated in here. Um, an example of that could be really useful, like baskets as well. Like if there's pages in WordPress that you don't want editable, um, so if you've got baskets, shopping carts, that sort of stuff, you don't want to set pages up on WordPress, you can use routes to do all that sort of stuff. Um, something else which is quite useful is you can give a root your name. So rather than referencing like uh, hello slash name all over your application as a URL, you can say, actually, this is called hello world. And then um, everywhere in your, in your theme, you can say, get me the URL for hello world. Uh, oh, my name is Adam, and it will generate this URL correctly for you. Why is that useful? Because URLs change a lot of the time, and you don't have to go through your whole application to make sure you've changed the URL correctly. You can just do it literally in there, and it will just like be available everywhere instantly. Um, rather than doing a, a, a callback, this function here, you can use controllers. We decided we like controllers. Controllers are fun. Um, they make code more reusable. Uh, so by default, Lumberjack will look in the namespace app HTTP controllers. Uh, and so this is basically saying, when you go to Hello World, run this controller and hit the show method. Um, so I'll just do like a quick example of what this what end uh, Ajax endpoint will look like. So here we're going to do uh, a post to add a comment to a specific article. So when someone does that, it's going to hit this article comments controller and call the store method. So here's our controller. We have a store method which gets the ID passed in. We're out of the request that comes in. We're going to get the the comment that comes out or whatever gets passed up. Uh, do some WordPress stuff to save that comment. And then we want to return JSON back um, because our JavaScript needs to do something with it, and JSON's the, the best way of communicating that data back. Um, and we're saying we've got a 201, which says, hey, this thing is created. Um, so it actually, like, it's quite simple compared to like, what all of the normal WordPress stuff would look like because of all the power that Lumberjack gives you. Um, another example is like form requests that I talked about. So when you do a post to submit contact form, call this controller on the handle method. Um, so come into here, we've got handle, we come back to contact form in a second. That's basically our validation stuff that we have. We get the input out. Uh, we go, hey, does this form validate? No. Therefore, I want to redirect back to the previous page, um, send back any errors that have happened, uh, any kind of old form values um, to repopulate the inputs, uh, send an email and then redirect back to say, oh, actually, no, this thing has now worked. Fantastic. Um, so this validation stuff, I'll just quickly <coughs> dive into like what this contact form class looks like. Um, it's pretty simple. That's it. So you have a class <laughs> that extends this abstract form where all the magic happens. And this is just you defining what your uh, validation is. So you don't have to check if this thing is empty or <coughs> is set, or you can do email, or min, max, like uh, basically like anything you can do in kind of like Laravel. Like you can just define your validation at this level. Um, with the session stuff as well, if you need to get stuff out of the session, so before we were setting like errors or old or um, success, you can just say, uh, hey, Lumberjack, get me the, the errors from the session. It's, it's that simple to, to use sessions. You don't have to worry about starting sessions and worry about that stuff. Like, Lumberjack handles all that for you. So kind of benefits to, to this router. Um, you can extend WordPress sites with custom URL endpoints for like really bespoke stuff. Uh, access to all REST-based uh, verbs, post, put, um, delete, get. You can add groups as well um, if you're doing kind of complex stuff. So you can have a group which says shop, 
and then items inside of that. So everything inside of it will automatically have the URL like slash shop. Um, so we're talking about requests. Let's talk about responses quickly. I'll have to go through this quickly. Um, these are things that you want to receive return from controllers. So we've got a timber response, which basically is what you need to use to render Twig templates. Um, or in Lumberjack, we've shortened this so it's just view. We use a package called um, Dark Taurus from Zend, which is, uh, they have some wicked stuff. So you can send just plain text back. You can send HTML. You can send XML if you want to. JSON, you can send an empty response. You can redirect. Um, so this is just some of the stuff you can do. You can check out their docs if you want to see more on those. Um, but why? So I've shown you kind of some stuff. Some of it is quite technical. Um, this all feels like overkill for like quite a lot of stuff. So let's just, let's just think about like when this is useful. So we've got typical sites, content sites, brochure stuff. Um, nothing complex. Then you've got this other side of the thing where you've got more software. Um, you need stuff like the MVC, you need migrations, fancy injection, tests. You need the solid foundation to be able to build your software on top of that you don't get from WordPress. So it's really easy when you've got a project. Um, so this blue dot here is like representative, uh, representative of a project. Um, sometimes it's really easy. Okay, this is just brochure site. I'm just going to put this. I'm going to do this in WordPress. Sometimes it's very software engineering. I'm going to do this in, say, Laravel or Symfony or something like that. What happens when the projects are in the middle? What do you use? It's a lot more difficult to, to find that balance. So the idea behind Lumberjack is to try and increase the amount of times that you can use WordPress before you have to go into something like Laravel. Um, that was our kind of vision for it. So you can do a lot more of this bespoke stuff. You've got this better foundation to build software in WordPress. But it's not for every project. It's not a silver bullet. Um, and I think it's useful saying that, like, recommend don't use what you don't understand. If there's lots of confusing stuff, if you've not done OOP stuff before, like, have a play. But um, I think that's, that's kind of quite key. Um, sometimes trying to use things you don't understand can lead to worse code and bad abstractions. Uh, so just be mindful of that. And I get that, like, Lumberjack can be quite daunting and scary at first and confusing. There's lots of kind of like new concepts um, that you need to kind of like learn before you start unlocking the full power of Lumberjack. I think that's where the beauty of Lumberjack comes from. Like everything I've shown you there is like all optional. That you don't have to use like any of that stuff if you don't want to. You can still write your WordPress the normal way. You don't have to use controllers. Um, the router's optional. The config's optional. Post objects optional, query builder is optional, like all of that stuff. You only have to use it like when you need to, if you if you decide that's that's what you want to do. Um, again, it's kind of built on Timber, but you, you still you don't really have to do stuff the Timber way if you don't want to. And that's because Lumberjack sits beside your theme. It's not your theme. It just sits beside and ready to hold your hand when you're ready to um, to kind of like level up. Um, and that means like you can also bring it in on any Timber site. It doesn't have to just be uh, like the Lumberjack starter theme. Um, you, it's basically just a config directory, um, bringing stuff in through Composer, and uh, one bootstrap file. Um, and that's, that's all you need in your theme, really, um, as well as like you need Twig and, and Timber and stuff. But so yeah, you can use as little or as much as you like. So just quickly, like some of the other things that are available in Lumberjack, I'll go through which are a little bit more technical. Um, we have a dependency injection container. It's fantastic. I freaking love it. Um, if you're not familiar with dependency injection, um, don't worry. But if you've used stuff like Laravel and stuff before, uh, it's a really good way of managing class dependencies. So um, facades, again, allows you to write more testable code and more readable code, in my opinion. Um, I won't go into what those are. But if you have any questions afterwards, feel free to ask. Um, Exception handling. So, if any error happens to your application, what happens is that get, that throws an exception. That exception bubbles all the way up to Laravel's uh, uh, Lumberjack's exception handler, and then you've got one place where you can then decide what to do. You can show specific errors. You can um, log stuff to to rollbar or other kind of like error monitoring stuff. So you can do it all in kind of one place. 
validation package, which we looked at. Um, view models, which are a consistent way. So sometimes in your controllers, you have to get stuff out of the database, um, get it in the right format, and send that back to your view. Um, view models are a way of taking that kind of transformation from data to your view. In a consistent place. Um, we've got service arrivals to deal with the container. Hatchet, so we have our own CLI, so you can deal with what so you can go, okay, I want, I want to make a new controller. PHP Hatchet, make, go on controller, give it a name, and it will create that class and stuff out for you. Um, we have a whole bunch of global helper functions. So we can like get stuff out of the config really easily. You've got like router, session, um, app for stuff in the container. There's, there's a whole bunch of them. Um, we've got a debug bar. So that's really handy. Like it shows you how many queries and stuff you're doing, what specific SQL that's being run, all that sort of stuff. Um, responsible objects, if you're familiar with those from Laravel. Other things on the radar, like we've got an example theme up, but it's currently in development. So if you want to actually see what one of these themes looks like, um, there's, a, there's a link to one, but uh, yeah, there's, there's not fully featured yet. Um, we're looking at doing some more automated testing in this as well. So um, we're using something called uh, PHP units to try and do some of the unit tests um, and kind of integration tests with Laravel Dusk, which is uh, basically brings up like a headless Chrome and tells Chrome as a browser to start doing actions. So like, click on, fill in this form, click this button, and therefore I expect this thank you message to, to come up. So we're looking at getting all that stuff in so you can like write tests in your application to make sure your site does what it, what it should do. Um, just like Lucy, this is what one of those tests can look like. Uh, so this is a, a Dusk test. So you say, all right, uh, initialize some stuff, um, create a post called uh, homepage title, uh, this is a page, and when we visit the homepage, I expect to see this title come up. Um, that's the sort of test and stuff you can run. I, I can't wait till we get some of that stuff, I think it's gonna be fantastic, um, and really makes your code easier to change. You write those tests, and if you need to come back to it, uh, you just run your test suite again, it'll tell you if stuff's broken. We have like a whole bunch of stuff that we want to do with Longjack. This is our Trello board. Um, there's there's so much we want to do. We're constantly working on this. We use it every day at work. Um, there's also a bunch of agencies over in Hampshire that are using it. They switched over. Uh, we've also spoken to the team uh, at Timber, and they're kind of really positive about this as well because obviously it's built on Timber. Um, so they're, they've given some really positive comments. Um, and yeah, we're really excited about where the lumberjack itself can go. But I guess we need people's help, we need people to start using it, to start playing with it, to help push it forward. Um, and I guess like collectively we can help make WordPress kind of great again. Um, so just wrapping up then, like, please get involved. We have a Slack channel, um, you can come ask questions, uh, we've got support, we'll post updates when, when the new features and stuff come out. Um, GitHub, if you want to put issues in, you want to write some documentation, um, tweet us. Um, in terms of like taking long jack for a spin, like how easy is it to get up and running, might be quite daunting. Um, we try to make it as easy as possible to, to get up and running. So uh, you can use Composer to install this package called long jack bedrock installer. Once you've installed that once, you can then run long jack bedrock new, then the name of your website. That will install bedrock, timber, and long jack ready to go out of the box within like seconds. So you don't even have to like, worry about hooking all that stuff up, you can just like run those two commands and you've got all the stuff ready to go. Um, so I'm kind of just like summarizing then, evaluate like the product mindset for you and your team, I guess on a project by project basis. WordPress is awesome, I think we can make it even more awesome. Challenge yourself to kind of push your, your stack forward in some way. Write code which is easier to change. Uh, Lumberjack is basically Laravel in WordPress. Um, we were heavily inspired by uh, the awesome work that Laravel does. We love it. Um, and we try to get the same feel uh, in WordPress as, as what Laravel has managed to do. And fundamentally, you only need to use whatever you, you need to in Lumberjack. Um, you don't have to use everything. But regardless of what you use, just go and create awesome stuff. Like, it doesn't really matter. Um, whatever works for you. Um, some links to wrap up, so that's our docs if you want to check it out, docs.lumberjack.relic.com. 
Uh, we have a Slack channel, slack.lomjack.relic.com for hiring if you're interested in working on some of this stuff, learning some of it, and give me a shout. Thank you. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Any other time questions? Yeah, definitely. Cool. Questions. Yeah. So, um, interesting. You said at the end that it's basically Laravel in WordPress yep. because you see all the codes very, very similar, mm -hmm. if not exactly the same as Laravel. <laughs> yep. How does that come about? So we use Laravel a lot, and we just like a lot of their naming conventions and, and that sort of stuff. So we could have used different names at different conventions, but it would have been doing it just to be different from Laravel. Um, and we, we are very pragmatic in a lot of the stuff that we do. So I think Laravel is very similar. It's not about like building the absolute best application because something like Symfony is probably slightly better there. Laravel is very much like pragmatic, rapid application development. And that's why we kind of wanted to push WordPress as well. Um, and it just made sense for us to, to kind of have like, there are differences, um, quite fundamental differences in certain places, but we felt like having a similar feel would be uh, would be wise. We also bring in some of the Laravel packages, so you have collections, you, we bring in like the actual Laravel collection package, so you can deal with arrays much nicer, so you can like map, filter, reload them, reach, and that sort of stuff, so um, yeah. Does that answer the question? I think so, yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Any other questions? Thoughts? Yeah, like what what kind of project would you use it for? You mentioned like like eShop or like WooCommerce site. Like yeah. What what else would would be would be recommendable? Like and what is like like too much trouble to go for a you know for something yeah. simple? Or maybe not. That's know. a good question. So um, if it's something that you know you're just going to build once and you're not really going to touch it, it might be overkill. Um, the lot of stuff that we work on is it, we touch quite a lot. Um, so pretty much all the sites that we build are, are Lumberjack, mainly because it's practice for when we get those bigger ones, like those like big charity sites that have hundreds and hundreds of pages or shops and that sort of stuff. So for us using all these smaller two, three, four page sites, mm -hmm. um, it allows us to get practice um, and learn ready for the bigger stuff. Um, but it kind of depends. Um, we've, we've used it on two landing pages for the last couple of weeks as well. So just one pages, just because it was easier. Um, and we don't have to like have two different stacks or anything then, but that's because we're familiar with it. It's just kind of, it depends. Um, again, you don't have to use any of it. You can still use the same stack until you use like Timber and uh, like Twig and just build your site in that way. And then if you decide you need to do some Ajax stuff, oh, actually now you can lean on Lumberjack um, and just get the benefits from it without having to write like horrible WordPress code. So it depends, but and it depends on kind of your or your team's level and like expertise and that sort of stuff. But um, I think it's a really good like introduction into a lot of these uh, more advanced uh, programming techniques and stuff as well. Because you don't have to like fully understand them. Like the framework just tells you how to use them. Mm -hmm. And next thing you know, you're using dependency injection. You don't even know it. And then like over the years, you start needing it more and more and more. And then next thing you know. Uh, you're familiar with all those patterns, then you need to use something like Laravel, and actually you can jump over to something like Laravel really easily, because it's, it's very similar. So mm -hmm. um, it can really help that kind of like learning process for developers, I think, as well. And, and it basically, like, when you're doing something from scratch, I think, no? Mm -hmm. It's not like you, you have something like, okay, we want to make it more flexible, let's say. Mm -hmm. You're not going to throw it on it and somehow... Yeah, if it's like an existing site, it might be quite tricky to, to do that. Um, yeah, we typically do a lot of sites just from the ground up. Um, trying to put it into an existing theme that's not timber, like, you know, it's probably not viable. Okay. Um, unless, the, me, unless the theme's already timber, um, then you might be able to plug it in. But it just kind of depends. Like I say, like, if, if the theme's timber, it should, it's literally just like a couple of folders that you need to plug in um, and then Add the add the core through like twenty kind of doing. Like, and then it's just available. You don't have to use any of it, but it's just there. Um, okay. So lumberjack, as you said, is built on timber. Yep. Is, is timber a is it a, a theme that you then build chart themes off, or is it a plugin or an MU plugin? Like yeah. So it's it's similar to lumberjack in as much as it's like a framework and a theme. Mm -hmm. So they have a timber start theme. There's also lots of other themes which are like still use timber. 
Um, uh, yeah, so you bring in like a timber core through Composer, yeah. uh, and that's where all, like, all the post types and all that kind of like query and stuff lives. Um, and then your theme is just like what the tweak views and <coughs> that sort of stuff. Um, typically with timber, we always like just have that start theme, or we just like go nuts on that theme. We don't child theme it or anything. Right. Um, with Long Jack, we don't currently support child themes uh, with our starter theme just because it's not what we're using and it can get quite confusing um, quite quickly. So, um, yeah, for our long jack stuff, it doesn't support child themes. It probably will work, but you might have to like, jump through some hoops, um, especially when it comes to like auto loading classes or twins and different stuff. We don't have tested it, so. Um, uh, yeah, so it's a, it's a composed package, basically, yeah. Jack, yeah. And then you've got your your theme that is a starting off point for, for yeah. you and anybody to. Yeah. So we, we imagine that the the framework itself will get a lot more updates in the theme. The theme will probably be pretty stationary. Um, and then we'll, the the really like great thing about that is like you can bring in new updates to Lumberjack uh, core really easily because you can just run a composer update and you bring all new features in without having to touch any of the code, just have more stuff available to you. Um, the way we had Longjack before was like all the brains of it was in the theme. So if we wanted to push an update out, everyone would have to like manually update everything in their theme and copy files across, so it was a nightmare. Um, so we moved all that stuff out into a package, so it's like really easy to update. Um, yeah, so we see the theme being pretty stationary, um, kind of intentionally, and then like all the stuff's outside. Yeah, that, that makes sense. I, have you heard of a, a framework called Themosis or Themosis, mm -hmm. which is a, a similar kind of Laravel inspired, but they, I think, mm -hmm. had an yeah. earlier version of Lumberjack, as you said, it was a lot was in the theme, mm -hmm. and then you chart theme off it. <coughs> yep. But I don't think they fully support chart theme, so you'd have a massive update path every time. Yeah. We try change. to make the update path as, as easy as possible. Um, we've got, so Lumberjack's currently on version 3. Uh, We've got a V4 release coming in the next month or so. Uh, it's kind of like feature complete. It's, it's all the syntax stuff you saw there was V4. Um, so like all the sessions and, and kind of form stuff uh, was kind of like all V4. So um, I don't want to show kind of old syntax. Like um, it's very similar, but we just got like some extra features like session stuff. It's just massive. Um, being able to just handle sessions so easily like and do form stuff again and redirect back. I've done a couple of sites recently, it's beautiful. It's interesting you mentioned forms then, so do you kind of shy away from using third-party plugins to, to do some basic functions? Yeah, so like Contact Form 7 or like Ninja Forms or whatever they are. Yeah. We used to use those. Um, we always struggled with getting the front end like visually correct, um, because we end up having to write a lot of that stuff or build the form in WordPress, which is in the database. Um, and it was very difficult, like keeping parity to um, like the right classes or clients can go in and mess stuff up quite easily. So we tend to write all of our forms like as we would write them if we were doing a static site. We get full control over it, we decide how the errors are going to show, um, that sort of stuff. And then that just does a, a post action to some URL and then WordPress kind of hooks up and then just sort of redirect back to wherever it came from. So it allows us to do yeah, fully customized forms like you would do on a on any other kind of like thing, you have to use a, a plugin or whatever. You don't have to worry about, um, I guess, validation that sort of stuff. You can handle that just through like a config file. Um, but yeah, that's typically how we do stuff. You don't have to use that if you don't want to. You can still use contact forms over if you want. Yeah, um, it's just preference, but it's there if you want it. Um, I guess the website runs faster. With uh, uh, just less. I guess so. Um, less yeah, I guess there's still code being run under the hood. It's just code that you haven't written. So for us, it's, it's, it should be, once you get familiar with it, quicker for you to write better themes, better applications. Um, it might be slightly better code because if you're using like the query builder and the query stuff, um, it might be that you're now using like a, a better way of querying that stuff than you would have done yourself. But it's not, I wouldn't say it's inherently faster um, there's still quite a lot of code that needs to be run, but I wouldn't say the PHP side of things will be a bottleneck. Um, it's very unlikely, unless you're doing like heavy database queries, that like executing PHP code will be the reason that your site's slow. 
Um, depends on what you're doing, it might be. But there's often things like um, bringing in loads of fonts or lots of JavaScript stuff. But those are things which you could reduce uh, better or quicker than like trying to optimize the PHP stuff. Um, as a reminder, just a quick note, like there's no front end stuff to like any of this long attack stuff. It's, the start theme doesn't enforce any front end stuff at all. Uh, it's all just back end. Um, so if you use, uh, I don't know, like SAS or JavaScript stuff, compiler using Gulp, Grunt, Webpack, whatever, like your flavor of front end looks like, even if it's just plain CSS or JavaScript, you don't have to worry about like changing the way that long attack does stuff because it just doesn't do any of that. Um, that was intentional. Uh, some themes and frameworks and stuff impose those on you, and we we think there's just way too many of those to, to try and compete with them. So we kept it just back end focused. Um, the issue, however, is yes, you can do long jack, uh, bedrock, new my site. That'll get you a new site and running. But how do you get your your front end stack into that theme? Do you have to just like manually copy it over? Um, what we've done at Rally is we've extended that Lumberjack Bedrock installer and created a really Lumberjack Bedrock installer. Um, so it does all the same stuff, but it also goes off, gets another folder from GitHub and copies that folder in for us automatically. So uh, you can start bringing in your, your own stack and do your own, own stuff using the installer. So when we set up a new site, we do really Lumberjack Bedrock new my site and that will set everything up exactly how we want to do WordPress using our front end stack and um, it'll, R1 even creates the database for you, uh, activates the theme, um, brings in like Hatchet and all that sort of stuff. So <coughs> yeah, installers are a great way if you're an agency um, of getting your flavor set up really quickly because I think that's really important, being able to start a project um, quickly. So, sweet. Any other questions? If not, I'll be around afterwards as well um, if anyone wants to chat. So, cool. Thank you very much. Cool.